suck it up, Harry. News arrives from that bastion of journalistic excellence that is known as Heat Magazine. Apparently, Harry's wife has always encouraged Harry to express his emotions. Naturally, she would do so because that provides her with fuel. She eschews the royal family's never complain, never explain maxim in favour of a more tell-all approach. And she's bound to do that, of course, by virtue of the fact that, first of all, him providing a more emotional response is going to provide her with more fuel. So she's always going to encourage him to emote. Secondly, by speaking his brain, so to describe him as such, or at least talk about his feelings and the way that he sees the world, allows her narcissism to hoover up potential vulnerabilities on Harry's part and use them against him. She, of course, has always approached things in a more tell-all manner because of her rampant victimhood. So, for instance, she once stated, not many people asked if I was okay. And that was as a consequence of the need for her to dole out a pity play on television to cause people to respond. But according to insiders, Harry's, wife's be Harry's wife is beginning to eat her words when it comes to Prince Harry's groans and grievances. Instead, we are told that despite encouraging her husband in previous years to open up, about his familial struggles and process his emotions, Harry's wife is now actually wishing he'd suck it up. But while she's raring to put their royal dramas in the past, he is still stewing and finding it harder than ever to move on for good. Harry's wife has done her best to be supportive and understanding of the situation with Harry's family, but she's reached the end of her rope. says an insider close to the former royal pair, who are parents to Archie 4 and Little Bit 2, in case you'd forgotten about that and you needed to be reminded. She's now demanding he start acting like a grown-up and put her and the kids first. Well, that's, of course, is as a consequence of him being in the sustained devaluation that he is told that he needs to put his big boy pants on. Remember once upon a time when it was the golden period, she encouraged him to talk about his emotions, to talk about how he was feeling, how everything was for him, which made it seem like she was compassionate and caring about him. But that's just the false compassion that arises during the golden period. And then, when he's in the sustained devaluation, that compassion dries up, and instead he's being told to suck it up, put your big boy pants on, ensure that you put me and the kids first, Stop dwelling in your emotions, etc. She's demanding he starts acting like a grown-up and puts her and the kids first. Right now, the royal family seem to have his full attention. He seems distracted and far less present. That, of course, will amount to a threat to control if he's looking elsewhere. It's as if he's haunted by everything that's gone on. In the past few months, speculation has been rife that September would bring some sort of resolution to Harry and King Charles's painful estrangement, following Harry's repeated outbursts, outbursts against his father and brother. Last week, Harry, 38, arrived in the United Kingdom to attend the Well Child Awards, which poignantly fell on the eve of the first anniversary of the Queen's death and Charles' ascension to the throne, sparking speculation that father and son would finally sit down face to face. But according to insiders, the opportunity came and went, with neither party finding the time to make amends. Adding salt to wounds, it said that Harry was snubbed from an intimate ceremony held by the royal family at Balmoral to pay tribute to the late Queen. Since then, whispers have only gotten louder when it comes to the rumoured guest list for King Charles' 75th birthday celebrations in November, 
with sources saying it's looking highly unlikely that Harry will be included in the lineup. And even if he is, it's said he'll be far on the periphery. Now, we're told, Harry is finally realising the repercussions of his pointed attacks against the royals, including slamming King Charles, Prince William and the Princess of Wales in his autobiography Spare. And while Harry's wife, <clears throat> 42, is urging him to put it all behind him, he simply can't shake the weight of what he's done. They may now live in California, but most of the time Harry's mind is a thousand miles away, obsessing over what his brother and father think of him, says a Sussex insider. That, of course, is problematic for Harry's wife, because if he's thinking about his father and his brother, he's not focusing on her, and therefore that is a threat to control and is not something that's of use to her. It's sucking his energy away from all the good things happening in his life. And for what? As far as Harry's wife is concerned, King Charles and Prince William have made it clear that they have no interest in making things right with Harry. So the healthiest thing that he can do is to take a stand and cut them off. She thinks he needs to toughen up and accept the fact that, at least for now, he isn't going to have any sort of relationship with them. Demonstrating, of course, her absence of emotional empathy, that she simply doesn't care. Maybe down the road, where time is mellow, things, there might be a chance for reconciliation. But right now, it's as plain as day that the pair who left the UK for California in 2020 and quickly set about telling their side of the story repeatedly, with Revelator Interviews books and their 2021 Netflix documentary, are not going to be on the path to reconciliation any day soon. Having previously accused his brother of physically attacking him, a white wine Ecros, when he stepped down as a working royal, adding that his father said things that simply weren't true, Harry doubled down against them in his recent documentary, The Heart of Invictus, saying he received no support after his mother's death in 1997. All this has sparked some backlash against Harry and Harry's wife, who critics accuse of milking family pain for profit. Meanwhile, the Sussexes' once united front has taken a few knocks in the process. In May, it was reported that their five-year marriage was in troubled waters after Harry was spotted spending time at the exclusive members' club San Vigente Bungalows in Hollywood. Now, heat is told mounting tension between the couple hinges on their very different mindsets. Harry's wife, for her part, is hell-bent on moving on and, as previously explained, is excitedly preparing for her big return to social media. But Harry, ruminating on the past, she's worried he's running the risk of being left behind. Harry's wife knows it's painful for Harry to move on, says the insider, but the sooner he toughens up and stops whining, the sooner he can move on and be happy. Now, this, of course, exhibits the contradictory nature of Harry's wife, what does she do? Well, she spends her time whining also. She spends her time complaining about how she has been treated. And when it comes to supporting Harry, she's no longer interested in doing that. She wants to be able to whine and whinge herself. She's allowed to, but when he does it, it's boring. It detracts from her. And because she has no emotional empathy for him, she just casts it to one side. And therefore, the supposed compassion that she once exhibited for him is demonstrated as being false. It never really existed. And instead, she tells him to suck it up, entirely commensurate with the sustained devaluation that he finds himself in. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.